What's up you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, you know the drill. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on a single video. Now this past Monday was the fourth episode of this season, the seventh season I should say, of Teen Mom OG. And we started off with Amber Portwood going with her mother to get her eyelash extensions done. And it turns out that even though I thought she officially kicked Matt to the curb um, in the last episode, she was still going back and forth with him about potentially reviving their dead end relationship. So of course, Amber's mother does not approve of Matt. She calls him a con, a bad person, and for some reason, Amber keeps um, sticking up for him despite the fact that what everyone in her world is telling her, including us, the viewers, is 100% true. We then head over to the biggest storyline of the episode, which was Macy letting us know that her lawyer had sent Ryan a letter about new visitation guidelines in regards to their son, Bentley. And it turns out that Ryan actually bought that house or are they renting? I don't know. Um, along the lake, and it is absolutely huge and gorgeous. You know, we only got to see it from the back so far, but it was really, really beautiful. And he has a friend come over who I've never seen on this show before, and they talk about his issues with um, Bentley and custody and Macy and all of that. And for some reason, to me, he still looked pretty high out of his mind in that scene. But I guess only time will tell what was going on. He just seemed really drowsy and slow. If anybody else noticed. Now, um, over there, he claims that Maisie has never ever helped him once since they had Bentley, but if I recall, Maisie was the one who struggled to raise Bentley practically alone from the very beginning. I remember there was this one scene, and for some reason, it's one of the scenes that sticks out to me the most in, teen, in the 16 and Pregnant memory, even though it was pretty mundane, but it was that Maisie had been watching Bentley all day uh, while Ryan, I think, was working, and when he came home, she she needed him to watch Bentley while she did her homework and he it's just straight up refused to do it it's not like he had anything else to do he just refused to do it and it was just so frustrating watching that so it's kind of funny to see Ryan make such an outrageous claim about Macy um, in regards to her parenting now Caitlin and Tyler launched their online store just and just before its release time the website crashed due to uh, an influx of traffic I guess people were camped out on the homepage refreshing and refreshing and refreshing refreshing and it crashed the website for them and the crash actually lasted an entire day and I felt really bad for them in that because the teen mom viewers can be pretty damn scathing so I can only imagine like how many angry tweets and Facebooks and Instagram messages they were getting from their um, fandom. Okay I'm really glad that Leah brought up Missing Amber again in this episode because looking back because guys I record these episodes sitting here not really looking at anything but my notes and so sometimes I don't pay attention to the scenes 100% because I'm writing as it goes along and so when I go back after recording these videos in order to paste some screenshots over I catch things that I didn't catch while I was watching and so in the last episode recap I completely missed out on mentioning Leah talking about how she wanted Amber and she was holding her hand too like she was like I want you to take me to the bathroom and it's because I never see you so I want to spend as much time as possible with you when I do get to see you and it's just so that broke my heart when I went back to go and watch it and I completely forgot to like leave a comment about it and everything like that so now in this episode we see Leah talk yet again about how much she misses Amber and it really makes you wonder how often Amber is skipping out on her like visitation schedule with Leah. Like we already saw in the previous season, her talking about sleeping in instead of going, being too depressed to see Leah, X, Y, and Z. And so as Leah, Amber, and Christina are all together doing cards, um, just before Amber heads out for what is it, like a month, three weeks, two weeks to shoot marriage boot camp, it really made me like just more irritated with Amber than I usually am. You know, like just the idea of Leah consistently talking about how much she misses her mom and here's her mom getting ready to ditch her yet again, you know, for about a month to go and save a dead end relationship with someone who does nothing but steal from her. It's like your daughter is literally crying out for you right in front of you and you'd rather go chase your boyfriend. Pathetic. And can I just say that Farah has been so shockingly pleasant this season. Um, she is leaving Sophia for yet another month in order to shoot another show. I think this was that dating show that never really took off. And um, just ahead of her heading out for the trip, you see her closing up on her businesses, making sure everything is okay with her employees. So she goes to them, she's like, hey, these are your schedules. I just wanna let you know I'm proud of you. And they hug, they talk about being grateful for working for her. And it's just, 
I am so happy to see how pleasant Farah has been thus far this season. You can really see a dramatic change in her. Now, um, Macy heads over to her friend Keely's house and they laugh about the text messages that Ryan was sending to them. I was like, you know what? This is a very serious issue that you guys are dealing with and Ryan's grammar is honestly the least of you guys' concern. It's not really something that you should be laughing at on television. As we all know, the kids', the kids' friends and uh, their parents seem to be watching the show and talking to the kids about the parents. So do you really want Bentley being made fun of at school for, you know, his dad's spelling? No, not really. But um, Macy does let us know that at a certain point, like they were going back and forth. Ryan was threatening lawyers on her. And she's like, you know what I want from you? I would like for you to take a drug test before seeing Bentley. And I'm going to pay for these drug tests for you. And Ryan refused to respond to that text message. And apparently that was sent the day before she went over to Keely's house. And that just confirms my suspicions. If you look closely at Ryan, you can tell like the boy is not all there still. The only question I really have in this case is that Macy said that she knew Ryan was on drugs for like quite a long time. So why is it only now that she's taking these really serious precautions? Cautions. Like Bentley has been in danger with Ryan, like allegedly, for about a year now, if not longer. So why is it only now that you've told people on TV that you're going to put his real life safety, like, you know, in check? This is something she should have been doing quite a while ago. So I'm really wondering, like, was she that serious about protecting Ryan that she was putting her own son in harm's way all this time, you know, just to make sure that it wasn't released to the media and on television. I really wonder what had been going on this entire time, being that Macy and his family knew he was on drugs, right? Y'all, can I just say that I absolutely live for how shady the people are at Kate's barn. Literally every time, listen closely, literally every single time she's gone over there, they've dropped the dime on how you know rare it is to see Caitlyn in the stable for this horse she's so desperately wanted right like this time it was a woman there and she goes oh Kate you know your horse was just telling me that uh she missed you you know you didn't visit her last weekend like you were supposed to she missed you and it just made me laugh out loud so bad because the last time she was there the stable guy made like a joke about her probably not remembering her way around the place because it had been so long and then the time before that he had said something else like that it's just Kate how often are you going to see this damn horse because these people are telling on your ass every single time you go by now Tyler alerts us that the website is back up and running and says that it's his fault um, that it was down in the first place because he did not warn the internet people that he's this huge reality star um, Kate gave Nova the ultimate death stare when she was bugging her and her friend while they were packing up the orders and I just about died Gary reveals that Amber has been talking to a new guys you know since before before heading out on marriage boot camp with Matt. Again, this just frustrates me about her. Like, you've got a daughter, you know you don't wanna be with this guy, you're already talking to new guys, and you're still gonna leave your daughter who misses you so much for a month just to be on television with someone you're already over? Really, Amber? Anyway, um, Gary was like, yeah, Amber, one of her new guys, she sent me a text like saying he's really legit, he's verified on Twitter and everything, and I'm like, what the hell does verified on Twitter have to do with, you know, a person? Uh, her bird tendencies never cease to amaze. Amber, I cannot believe you're pregnant again. This is just a tragedy all around because, ugh. Now, Farrah is packing up to leave and you could just smell how stinky her suitcase probably was with how dirty everything looked and unpacked. And y'all, there was just a really sweet moment where Farrah, not Farrah, her daughter Sophia writes a sweet note and sneaks it into her suitcase for her to find when she lands at her destination. Sophia really is a sweet little girl. Now, did Deborah get hip implants? Because she, not only do I think she got hip implants, but like with every individual scene she gets, she ups her valley girl voice even more. And it's just so cringe-tastic in a good way. She's not like a regular cringe, she's a cool cringe. <laughs> now, Jen and Larry inadvertently blow the lid off of Mackenzie's claims that no one but Macy knew that Ryan was abusing drugs all this time because in a conversation with their producer, they talk about how happy they are, uh, they were when Ryan was in rehab because it was the first time in a long time that they honestly felt like they weren't gonna wake up to a text about him being dead or, you know, overdosed or 
something crazy happening to him. And they literally admit that they knew something was going on. Like they're like, we knew something was going on. We're not stupid. It's just that Ryan would argue or straight up leave anytime we would try to confront him. And so watching this scene, I was like, well, where's Mackenzie and her little letter talking about how many days, minutes, hours, years, and seconds it had been since, you know, they found out and didn't tell her. You really do have to wonder how stupid a person has to be to get up on national television and claim that they had no clue that someone the whole world could see, you know, was suffering from some sort of addiction, was an addict. Like even when he was passed out behind the wheel, she allegedly didn't know. His parents knew, his baby mama knew, but not you, the one who's spending day and night with him and allowing him around your own child. That just goes to show how ignorant of a parent you are. You know, that anyone can see this and you just, quote unquote, don't see it and allow your own child around it. It's literally pathetic. And while Mackenzie claims that Ryan's ultimate trigger is Macy, Jen and Larry say that his triggers are Mimi Jen and Bentley, which makes a lot more sense, you guys. And let me just say this. Mimi Jen and Larry saying that his triggers were her and um, Bentley and not Macy is not something that they had to do. They could have been on the whole Mackenzie front where they just try to drag Macy at every turn because remember last episode, they really did drag her and they would drag her and claim that she was a trigger if she in fact was, right? But they said the truth, which is that the triggers are Mimi, Jen, and Bentley. So yet again, Mackenzie is exposed as a pathological liar. Now, um, the night before her flight, Farah goes out for dinner with her father and his girlfriend and tells them not to let Deborah contact Sophia. So she actually breaks down crying happy tears over the hospitality that Michael's girlfriend and himself has have been showing her, you know, while she's been in between homes. And they really are showing her a lot of hospitality because there is no way in hell anyone, you know, family or not, would be moving into my house with like 20 dogs, you know, a horse and a baby like that's just too much for one house now we actually see amber return from marriage boot camp which is a pretty big surprise because i'd be nervous that mtv would be kind of scared about being sued by we tv for kind of exposing the plot line right um because amber reveals that things didn't go well at marriage boot camp and she found that matt was still lying consistently and that she was 100 percent done with him so it's kind of like Hello, can you really expose a plot line? Even though we all know, can the network actually do that and mention the show and everything it was really interesting to me. Anyway, she confirms that she and Matt are officially over and that the world is her oyster and that there are a few men making her hotline bling. It turns out that Ryan still hadn't texted Macy back about taking that drug test days later. So we, we see him call a lawyer from his home about um, his custody agreement with Macy and he tells the lawyer that things have changed in the whole custody dis uh, situation and the whole reason that they have to go to court for the first time in nearly a decade is because you know it turns out that he was an addict and he went to rehab for his addiction he reveals that his addiction was in fact heroin and so the lawyer tells him that a judge has to be confident that he's clean and sober and you can just see him and Mackenzie freeze in that moment like they looked guilty as sin and so the lawyer drops the ultimate gem of the episode by saying and I quote I've never seen a judge set parenting time for someone struggling to past drug screenings and again you see ryan and Mackenzie freeze ryan is almost visibly shaken at the end of that conversation and you know you can just tell he's still on that good good now the fact that ryan can blow through forty thousand dollars per month remember a couple of episodes back Mackenzie said that he admitted to spending ten thousand dollars a week ten times four forty thousand dollars a month for what, like a year, over a year, who knows? And still be able to live in that beautiful, like massive house is just a testament to how much these people are being paid. Like it's absolutely astounding, you guys, absolutely astounding. But you know what, as usual, I'm more excited to hear what you have to say about the episode. So do make sure to leave all your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below and we'll chat. You can also like this video, subscribe for more, feel free to share it with your friends as well and follow me across social media where I absolutely love chatting with you. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.